ladies. ladies. The day has finally arrived. I'm here to make an Ableton mixing mastering video. I've got a lot of people hitting me up recently about this. I'm about four years deep into my Ableton journey and I think I've picked up a lot of cool things on the way to show you guys. Hope everyone's been good. I'm gonna try and not talk too much. I'm gonna just shut my ass up and we can get to the video. All right, so the average day of an Ableton user is going on Twitter and seeing people that use FL shitting on Ableton. People be saying the drums sound whack, you can't get shit to hit, all this type of crazy shit. All that is completely false. I think you just gotta know how to use the DAW to get that sound that you wanna get. First thing I would recommend in Ableton, so if I open up a new MIDI or audio track, I automatically get loaded up with the EQ and a utility. So even with the audio track, boom, it pops up. And if you guys want to do this for yourselves, what you got to do is pull up the effect. Let's get an EQ8. Once it's on there, right click and do save as default MIDI track. So you got to make sure you do this for both MIDI and audio tracks. The reason I like doing this, it just saves me so much time. I know I'm going to be EQing every sound I'm using most of the time. So having that preloaded ready to go is just so fast and nice for my workflow. I also just dropped an Ableton mixing and mastering kit that contains 11 Ableton effects presets and also has eight of my master chains. Most of these presets are stock, but some of them do need third party plugins. So if you don't have these third party plugins, I'd recommend going online and buying them. So make sure you go online and you purchase these plugins. If you don't have them already, go online and buy them. So off bat, I know a lot of people that like to keep their master chain clean, but if you like to soft clip to kind of get that nice knock to your drums, I would recommend using the stock Ableton saturator. Super, super fire. Also adds a nice bit of distortion. So you throw that on the master and you could just literally turn on the soft clipping mode. This is what I use personally. I have this default loaded up on my Ableton every time I open it. It just saves me a lot of time and I love the sound of it. Another one you could use is a stock Ableton glue compressor. This also comes with a soft clipper and it has more knobs so you can kind of get more control over your sound. But if you don't know what you're doing with compression and you want to keep it simple definitely just stick with that saturator also don't forget when mixing things sound selection is very very important still if you're trying to mix down trash sounds you're already setting yourself at a disadvantage also while using ableton you want to make sure you're leaving yourself some headroom it's just the little things that you don't think are that important that really start to add up as you're mixing i'd recommend also turning down the volume in the plugin itself sometimes rather than this volume knob just so we could start at the actual source of the audio let's go ahead and turn it down in here Let's go ahead and lay down some chords here real quick. Also, if you feel like your tracks are sounding too thin, you should definitely start layering. Even if it's just the same chords copied onto another plugin, layering just adds a level of depth and character. Once again, do not get mixing and sound selection confused. These are two different things. Sometimes people have no fucking clue how to mix, but their sound selection is elite. Also, do not sleep on Max for Life plugins. There are hella fire free ones on their site. This creative extensions kit is so, so fire. I would highly recommend downloading this. It has my favorite reverb that I use all the time and it is also free, so please download this. Also, when adding delays and reverbs and effects like that, make sure you guys are utilizing sends. Sometimes putting reverb or delays on the actual track itself could kind of just be too much. So if you want the effects to be more light and kind of more tucked in the back, try using sends and see if you like the sound. I'm gonna record some live percussion right now and I'm gonna create to send that it has a really nice reverb i'm gonna show you guys how sexy this shit sounds so this is the reverb right here it's called drum spring reverb which is in the ableton mixing and mastering kit also make sure you guys are grouping and labeling your things as you're going in ableton it just makes the process so smooth and i already have the reverb send set up so i'm gonna just turn it up right here take out the low end because we don't want any of that I also love to use the stock Ableton compressor on things like this to kind of bring out the transients. And with the newer Ableton updates, they change the default compressor settings, but this is the one I like to use. I change this to peak and I turn on makeup. I turn attack all the way up and then I kind of just bring the threshold down and mess with it until I like where it's at. It 
Maybe slower shaker. I'm not really feeling the fast one. Also, this mixing and mastering kit is heavily focused on drum processing and drum bussing. So I'm gonna throw one of these presets on my addictive drums and see how it sounds. So I like this kit, but it's a little weak and it's kind of quiet. So let's go to the mix and master pack. Let's go to effects. And as you can see, I have a bunch of presets we could choose from. So the ones that are labeled stock obviously are just stock Ableton plugins, but I have a couple ones that require third party ones. The kit also comes with the template that tracks out all the sounds for you individually so you can mess with them. Uh, so just instantly get that knock, get that nice texture. Also, if you guys are going to use the mastering chains in this kit, I would recommend throwing it on earlier in the process. I feel like if you make a whole beat and then you throw it on at the end, it could kind of mess things up. So which one do I want to mess with? Let's do the compressor clipper one. This is a stock one. Boom. <laughs> Let's also group all the melodies. Let's sidechain the addictive drums to the melodies. Sidechaining in Ableton is also super nice. I love using it on kicks. Like a light sidechaining just adds such a nice texture to it. So I like to sidechain using the stock Ableton compressor. What you got to do is open it up, turn the sidechain on. You want the input coming in from addictive drums. Let's actually just do the kick. Let's just do the kick and snare. So I'm going to duplicate this over, add the snare to. I'm not liking how this kick is sounding. Let's just get the good old reliable prototype kick from my drum kit 4 always does the job. I added a nice EQ preset from the kit that I put on all my kicks basically, which just kind of gives it some punch. It's just a basic EQ. Where is it at? Clean kick thump. Let's put that on. Basically just cutting off some of the highs of the kick so you get that nice, smooth, clean round kick. And also boosting some low end to just give it some more knock. And another thing I like to put on my master is the multiband dynamics. So I kind of just throw that hoe on. Sometimes I like to use it to boost low end, but this kick is already where I want it to be. So maybe you could just increase some of the mids and highs. With it on too, just the default preset is already giving it a different sound. But I feel like we might not need it because this beat is kind of already really loud. Maybe just a little bit of high end. it just gives it a really soft clean sound which i like a lot of the time so i'm gonna go ahead and leave that on i'm gonna keep looking for snares i feel like this snare isn't really doing it for me yet I might just say fuck it and end up changing this snare completely where is it at let's go into my my drum kit 4 Once again, make sure you're labeling all your shit because it gets really confusing the more layers you start adding on. So I'm going to click on this track, click Command R, right, bass, kick. And notice how I have my percussion in the group, I have the drums in the group, just making sure everything is clean. <laughs>
okay. All right, man, I think that's gonna do it for today's video. Hopefully I taught you a thing or two about how to mix and master in Ableton. Once again, if your sound selection is up to par, I feel like your mixing and mastering process won't have to be as intricate. Starting with good sounds, whether it's drums or synths, will just put you far ahead of everyone else already. And I kind of don't like to overthink mixing and mastering. I wanna keep it as simple as possible just so I can have as much fun as I can. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Love y'all, see you in the next one. Kisses, smooches, peace.